Welcome to the next episode of Blender Beginnings. Uh, quite a straightforward episode this. We're going to be focusing on scene navigation. Uh, there's going to be three parts to this, which I'm going to go through. I'm going to start by talking about the scene itself, how you can move, rotate and scale through that scene. I'm then going to be moving on to some of the icons and the gizmos that you can use to actually get the viewpoint that you want and how you can snap to very particular views and align those up in terms of the viewport here, how you can divide that into front side and top. And then I'm going to finish up by just talking a little bit about a couple of context sensitive menus that you can bring up, as well as how to switch between perspective and orthographic views and where you want to be using each of those. The last thing I'll mention is I am going to include a few shortcuts for these that are going to appear in the bottom right of the video so you know what shortcuts to press. Historically, what I have been doing is I've just been clicking on the icons or the relevant menus. But that was just while you just get into grips with the interface itself and you've opened up Blender for the first time. OK, let's get into the first part. OK, the first thing is scene navigation. And there's three main things that you do in order to be able to work around and move around in your scene. First one is to rotate. The second one is to pan. And the third one is to zoom in or out. In order to rotate, you just hold down the middle mouse button and you move the camera around like that through rotate around your scene or a particular object. If you want to pan, then you hold down shift and the middle mouse button. And again, just move the mouse around like that to pan as you need. The easiest way to zoom in and out is just to use the middle mouse scroll wheel. And all you have to do there is just scroll it down to zoom out and scroll it up to zoom in. You have a second option as well. You can just hold down control, hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse forwards and backwards to zoom in and out respectively. The second part that I want to actually talk to you about are these gizmo controls here. I did cover them briefly in uh, the first video that I did, but I'm just going to go over it here again because it's central to scene navigation. So if you don't want to use the middle mouse button and rotate like that, one of the things you can do is you can actually grab one of the handles on this uh, gizmo for the viewport and just drag it around like that. And that will give you the control that you need to position your viewport camera. Another thing that you can do as well is if you need a particular view, you can click Z for top view, you can click Y for front view, and you can click X for side view. You can go to the other side by clicking the minus version for each, such as Y, X, or Z as well. But again, that's just handy just to give you the control that you need. We also have these controls here as well, which essentially provide you with the same sort of control that you have using the mouse and the shortcut keys I gave in the first part of this video. The only difference is you have to hover your mouse over it and then keep the left button on your mouse clicked. So this one allows you to zoom in and out, okay? The magnifying glass that is. Then we've got the palm hand, which allows you to move the view, which is what we would do when we hold shift in the middle mouse button, okay? One thing I'm going to mention here, by the way, is that if you move your view or you pan your view rather, okay, the point which your camera rotates around does actually shift with it, okay? So just be wary of that if you ever have to actually like, you know, reposition your camera and get it to a more a more central view, which you may have to do manually. Although there are other ways to actually center that, which I'll go through in a moment. This button is for positioning a camera in your scene. And this is actually for perspective and orthographic and switching between those views. I'm going to go through that in the last part of the video. The second thing that I wanted to do um, highlight to you is the, the view menu is quite important here. It's in object mode, which is how you um, how you access it. But it's useful for a few different things in regards to organizing the viewport as you want it to be organized. There's quite a number of options we have here if we click on it, such as being able to, oh, sorry, such as being able to frame certain objects, uh, set active cameras, and also set particular viewpoints. So this, for example, 
is just another way to set up what we did by clicking on the X, Y, and Z points of the viewport gizmo. For example, I could click top here to get to the top view, or I could choose uh, could choose front, for example, or I could click seven on the numpad to go back to top. But the main one that I wanted to talk to you about as well was actually area where you can toggle quad view, okay? You can also use Control Alt Q to switch between having quad view and having one viewport basically. I'm just gonna move this back into perspective so that that looks a bit better. So if I go back into quad view, what's useful about this is that we have the perspective view, which is in this top right hand box, which we've done all previous videos through, but then we have ones for the top, the front, let me position this a little bit better, get these all centered. So we have top, we have front, and we have side, okay? And this has been quite a common view viewport that we've had in previous 3D programs, and certainly in game engines, in Unreal Engine, for example, right up till the third version, it always opened up with four windows as default, which would be front, front, top, side, and then a real-time 3D view of everything, or the perspective view, okay? And the reason that this is useful is that you may want to make a change to this object and start modeling, but you may have to do things in top view or front view just to speed things up. I'll give you an example. If I go into edit mode and let's say I add an edge loop here, okay, I may decide that I need to pull this face out for some reason, okay? So I could extrude this from there but I also may find it easier to do it here from the top view just to get more accuracy so I can get out to where I need it to be. And then I could also maybe select another face and then I could extrude that out. And I could do it from the right view, for example, if I wanted to do that, okay? And as you can see, with these views, it just gives me a bit more control and a bit more oversight over my objects, if that is indeed what I want to do. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was something, some things around the viewport that you can actually do just to split things up, uh, perhaps more to your liking. So there is an option to actually horizontally and split these windows as you see fit rather than just choosing the or toggling with the quad view. You can go into the corner here and just click and drag over another window very simple to do okay do the same here by pulling another one across there okay and then you can have windows that way okay if you want to actually pull these back you have a couple of options you can do you can just drag this over here I believe yep yeah, that's where it is so you just click and drag to the right and you'll pull those windows back okay um, now it's only possible really to drag it across that way Okay. If you actually want to split this the other way, a way that you can do it is by clicking on view. Okay. You can go down to area and you can use horizontal split. Um, vertical split is what you've just seen me do. But you can also choose horizontal split and that gives you a line here where you can just drop that wherever you want. And then you can actually start pulling these across that way. Okay. And then that would give you maybe two or three windows or wh whatever view you wanted. Uh, maybe we want to have this one, uh, maybe as some kind of image editor, for example. And maybe we wanted this to be, you know, top down view or something like that. But that just gives you another idea on how you can, how you can switch these windows. Okay, so I'm going to pull these back and pull that up like that. So then we just get back, get back to our view. The last thing that I really wanted to talk about here was, well, two things really. Um, one is going back to the view menu. There are a few other options here that can be handy just for quickly navigating your scenes or getting to particular things. So, so one thing I want to talk about was the frame options here in the view menu. And this allows you to frame a particular object or a particular group of objects. 
this doesn't really matter when you've only got one object in your scene but once you start having something that has potentially hundreds of assets or maybe a couple of hundred assets in there like uh, rocks and trees and a landscape and all sorts it can get quite hard to find what you're looking for so so to give you an example I'm just going to very quickly add a few more objects so I'm going to add a cube bring that over there uh, no, control A no not control A A let's add a UV sphere bring that over there and then we'll also add uh, this meta ball just because why not okay so we've got a few objects in our scene at the moment now I have this meta ball selected I let's say I don't really want to concentrate on these other objects and I just want to go to this one I can go to view go down to go to frame selected here okay either by selecting it here or by hitting the period on the numpad okay and you see it just goes in on the object now not only does it find the object for you in the scene but when you click the middle mouse button and rotate or you do it here uh, here with the gizmo you notice that the orientation of the viewport is around that object as well okay now if I was to select these two by clicking and dragging again I could go to view and I could go to frame selected here and then it's in between both of those objects so you can select more than one if I was all the way up here and I wanted to get back to my objects for some reason if I was doing something over here in the scene I could go to view frame all or press the home button and that will bring everything that's in my scene interview okay so those are handy tips to know if you want to very quickly navigate to a particular object or a particular element within your scene the last thing that I wanted to talk about in scene navigation was this tab here which allows you to switch between perspective view which I'm in now to orthographic okay so they look quite similar but if you notice in perspective it's all got it's got Z depth basically you know as objects move further away they get smaller in comparison to where they are in the scene okay whereas with orthographic that doesn't happen but also I with orthographic it also allows you to zoom right in and, um, and makes it a little bit easier to model details what it also provides you with is it doesn't give you a sense of your scene properly because if I had a really big scene here it would just look like isometric art and you know, everything would kind of look the same scale which isn't really accurate but for modeling details and making sure that things are spaced out as they should be um, it's very useful so if I went into a top-down view for example and I zoom in on things we've got the grid here that we can work with so if I want to start adding details um, that's going to be much easier you can do it in perspective view of course but once things get quite intricate then orthographic is much more useful but then when you want to get a sense of your scene as you can see I've just moved it's automatically moved back to perspective view okay but then that allows you to see the depth and where things are blocked off and, and how everything fits together in sense of the overall composition of the space um, so just be aware that you know perspective is useful for taking in your whole scene and when you, you know your scene development orthographic orthographic is useful for actually building objects themselves and putting the details in and building things accurately because it allows you to use the grid okay and while I'm on it around this gizmo I thought I'd mention as well you can use the gizmo here to switch between top front and side but you can also howl down alt and the middle mouse button and pull down for top pull left for side pull right for front okay just thought I'd mention that basically so you're aware of that that's going to wrap everything up for this video though like I said it's pretty straightforward it's just navigating your viewport really and getting used to selecting objects and that kind of thing so yeah, if you've got any questions, then please put them in the comments. But I think that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks very much.